The Prophet ﷺ tells us, is in a narration in Sahih Bukhari, عُرِضَتْ عَلَيَّ الْأُمَمْ فَجَعَلَ النَّبِيُّ وَالنَّبِيَّانِ يَمُرُّونَ مَعَهُمْ الرَّهْضِ وَالنَّبِيُّ لَيْسَ مَعَهُ أَحَدٌ That the Prophet ﷺ is prophesizing and talking about how he had a glimpse, a vision, he got to see what would take place on Judgment Day. And he says, nations were displayed before me. One or two prophets would pass along with a few followers. And even a prophet would be passing by accompanied by no one. This hadith teaches us that even if you work very hard, and we know that the MBA, they work in the best way. They work the hardest. Even if you work very hard, not everyone will have a huge impact on their community. It's a blessing. It's a luxury to be able to have that impact. But not everybody, even if you work hard, will have that impact. However, the fact of the matter is that every single one of the Anbiya, every single one of the Prophets wanted to leave a legacy. They wanted to, of course, as we all should, following in their footsteps, we want to know Allah Ta'ala, worship Allah Ta'ala, practice our Islam, and then share it with others and have that positive impact, create a legacy before we go. We know that our Prophet Sallallahu indeed wanted that impact as well, that legacy. He commanded the believers when he said, Tazawwaju al-wadud al-walud fa'inni mukathirun bikum al-umam Marry women who are loving and fertile for I will indeed outnumber other nations through you, through you believers. So subhanAllah, this is an interesting hadith and we know this is taking place nowadays. Many other nations, they just are refusing to have children. And the Prophet is telling the believers, specifically you could say to the men, that when you are getting married, part of your criterion, there should be many criteria, but part of that criterion is what? To look for the sister that is family oriented. You want someone who wants to have lots of children. Why? Because through your children is your sadaqatul jariyah. This should be a top priority for you. This is going to be your continuous charity to the world that you raise righteous believers and they're going to have a larger and larger impact. The more numbers they are, they're going to have a large impact on the world around them. They will be able to introduce more people to Islam. They'll be able to demonstrate the beauty of this Islam because you've raised them correctly. So we want to follow the sunnah of the Prophet And we know that the Prophet was the most influential human being in human history. So our goal is to have a lasting impact on the community that we live in. But the question I want to ask is this. How can we check to see if we're doing a good job? How can we check to see if we're having the, this sunnah impact that we want to implement? How can we verify? Well, for many of you, this isn't the city that you were born and raised in. Of course, some of you it is. Some of you that are younger, you were born, born and raised in the city, okay. But for many of you, this is not the case. You were born somewhere else, you were raised some, you, you, you know, you, maybe you moved around multiple times for work purposes or for studies, etc. And a good way to measure your impact is to look at the places that you've lived before and ask yourself some basic questions. Do those people miss me? Do they remember me? Did I start something beneficial that is now ongoing and continuous? Or is it the case that you've gone from city to city, living a couple years here, a couple years there, etc., without impacting anyone? It's as if you never existed. And if so, do you realize that one day, whether you want to or not, you'll be forced to leave this community? And I don't mean moving away, I mean all of us pass away. So it's a similar, similar notion. Whether that person leaves by going somewhere else or whether that person leaves because Allah Ta'ala took his soul through death. The fact of the matter is, if you know that you have this legacy of going from one place to the other, and unfortunately you did not have an impact, then my question to you is this, how will this place be any different if we are day by day getting closer to death and eventually we'll have to leave this community as well? So the question I want us all to ask is the following. How do I establish a legacy? Well, we already mentioned through the long term, children are very clear goal. Have children, try to raise them right, and inshallah ta'ala, as you get older and pass away, they will continue on with children and grandchildren and so on and so forth. But what about in the immediate? What about in the here and now? What can we do? One important factor is to make sure that we are community-oriented people. And what I want to focus on today is what? Having good friends. Having good relationships with the people around you. 
to not just simply have the relationship that I come, I do my prayer, I leave, and I've been standing next to the same people in my salah, Jum'ah after Jum'ah, and I still don't know their names. It's been 10, 20 years, I still don't know their names. This is not healthy. Rather, we want to make sure that good believing friends is not only a sunnah of the Prophet it is actually a sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How amazing, subhanAllah. Allah says what? وَاتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلًا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? That, and Allah took Ibrahim alayhi salam as a close, intimate friend, as a khalil. So it is a sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have that bond, to have that khalil, close friendship. And unfortunately in an age where you're finding more and more people are isolated, more and more people are just simply living through technology on their phones and on their laptops, on their laptops even though we are allowed, now, now that the uh, pandemic is over, we are allowed to interact. Some people, they've gotten used to that lifestyle and they are simply living in isolation. We should remember this, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us, yes, even I take a khalil, even I have a close intimate friend. And of course we know that if we go to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu taking close friends is how our deen reached us today. That's how, how, how do we know about our Islam? It was transmitted from the Prophet sallallahu to those who were closest to the Prophet sallallahu the Sahaba, and then those tabi'een, they studied under them. And you could say they graduated from their classes in university and so on and so forth until all of this deen, one person after the next, was transmitted all the way till us today. And this wasn't easy. It wasn't like every friendship was always just smiles and sunshine, as they say. No, we know that even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands His Prophet وَاصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِي يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَةِ Allah ta'ala says what? And keep yourself, O Muhammad sallallahu keep yourself patient with those who call upon their Lord in the morning and in the evening seeking His face. In other words, stay close to those who are sincerely praying to Allah ta'ala day and night. Why would Allah ta'ala have to command the Prophet to be patient with them? Because clearly it wasn't always easy. Sometimes personalities clash, sometimes opinions differ, sometimes people don't get along. And so even though you might want to abandon them, what is your command? You must be patient with the people who are sincerely praying to Allah day and night, seeking the face of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ tells us how we can reach a high status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the Prophet ﷺ tells us, خَيْرُ الْأَصْحَابِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرُهُمْ لِصَاحِبِهِ The best companion in the sight of Allah is the one who is best to his friend. SubhanAllah, what a beautiful hadith. You want to be one of the best people in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what should you do? Make sure you are a best friend. Make sure you have a best friend. Make sure you have people that are close to you and you take care of them. You look after them. Can we, any of us, say that we have someone that's that close to us? Or are we the types of people who, yes, I have acquaintances. When I worked in this city, I was friends with some people at work. But then after I left, I forgot about them. Then I went to another city and I lived or I worked or I studied or whatever. And I got close to some people, but then I left. Where's, the, where's that bond? Where's that impact? Or is it just passing through with no impact whatsoever? In fact, subhanAllah, this deep love could be your ticket to paradise. How so? Because the Prophet tells us, again, Sahih Bukhari, مَا لِعَبْدِي الْمُؤْمِنِ عِنْدِي جَزَاءٌ إِذَا قَبَضْتُ صَفِيَّهُ مِنْ أَهْلِ الدُّنْيَا ثُمَّ احْتَسَبَهُ إِلَّا الْجَنَّةِ SubhanAllah. That the Prophet, the Prophet tells us what? I have nothing to give but paradise as a reward to the believing slave who, if I cause his close intimate friend, his best friend, or it could be also relative, somebody that's very dear to you, somebody to pass away and they simply are patient, they remain patient with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they expect the reward from Allah, then what is your reward? Nothing but paradise. Can any of us say that we would have such a close friend that it would be so devastating, so heartbreaking that if just through some patience that Allah Ta'ala is going to give us paradise, SubhanAllah, this is the mercy of Allah, but you have to have those close relations first and foremost, otherwise the equation doesn't work. So yes, and as an important point for those of you who are older, the fathers in the room, and mothers of course, if you don't have a group of friends, because perhaps you're too lazy to keep up with them, or because you're so busy with work, everything's always about the bottom line, the bottom dollar, how much am I going to make? No, no, I don't have time for all this. Oh, we had a disagreement, so 20 years of friendship, I just throw it away, no problem. SubhanAllah, like many people do, just because of one little, I don't know, disagreement. If that is the case, then what kind of example are you setting for the kids? And if it is the case that in a few years from now, your child ends up spending all their time playing video games on their phone, 
or perhaps just hanging around terrible friends, or perhaps they, good, they had good friends at one point, but just because of some little disagreement, they threw all that away and they cut them off. My question is, what are you going to tell them? How exactly are you setting an example for them to follow you? What are you going to tell that child? No, no, my dear son, get out there, go make friends, hold on to them. For years, you want to make deep bonds with the people around you. Obviously, the kid's going to look at you and say, and who are your friends? Who do you spend time with? Where's that impact in your life? It just doesn't work. Everybody who knows anything about parenting is, they, they would know that what? Do as I say, not as I do is a policy that doesn't work. When you say, do as I say, not as I do, it doesn't work. It is a failing idea. So yes, friendship is necessary in all circumstances. In times of happiness, you want someone to share in those happy moments. And in times of sadness, you need someone to help you. And the only friends worth having are who? Those who are first and foremost truthful with Allah. They know the truth about Allah, and they are honest with Allah, and they are believers. Number two, truthful with themselves. Not only are they believers, but they avoid any hypocrisy. Because obviously someone can say, oh, I'm a Muslim, but he's a munafiq, or he, he lives a different lifestyle. Rather, what? No, you have to practice what you preach. So you're truthful with Allah because you believe in Islam. Number two, you actually practice what you preach and avoid hypocrisy. And then number three is what? Truthful with his friend. Truthful with you as an individual. And this is why the word for friend, which is sadiq, comes from the root word what? Sidq. Comes from the root word sidq, which means truthfulness. That's what, in, from the Islamic perspective, even built into the Arabic language, truthfulness is built into it. This is why Allah Ta'ala commands, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amnu, ittaqu allaha wa kunu ma'as sadiqeen. O you have believed, fear Allah and be with those who are truthful. You want to have a sadiq, a sadiq? You want to have a good friend? Who are your asdiqa? Who are your friends? It has to be who? As sadiqeen. Those who are truthful. The Prophet says in this regard, لا تصاحب إلا مؤمنا ولا يأكل طعامك إلا تقي Associate only with the believer. You should only be a close, intimate friend of who? The believer. Yes, you can spend time with non-Muslims, but the objective there is da'wah. The objective there is to convert and to have an impact. But when it comes to spending time with someone where you can put your guard down and simply just enjoy their company and be friends with, this has to be a believer. And then what? And don't let anybody eat from your food except for that a person is a taqi. A muttaqi, somebody who has fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God-fearing. This is why Allah says what? That close friends on that day, close friends on judgment day, they will be enemies of one another, except those who are righteous. Furthermore, the Prophet says what? The Prophet tells us that truthfulness leads to righteousness and righteousness leads to paradise. So that the more you are with good friends, truthful friends, honest friends, that when you guys have discussions, as long as everybody's honest with one another, then the conclusion of the discussion will be towards something good. The only way the outcome, when all, you know, they say two heads are better than one, when all these minds are together and discussing an issue, the only way it could keep leading towards evil again and again is what? If people are dishonest with themselves and each other. So yes, being truthful, being around truthful people, inshallah ta'ala, it will lead to goodness and goodness will ultimately lead to paradise. And inshallah, we'll continue with this topic in the second khutbah. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam si makbira. Bismillah. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. One of the most famous hadith that we all know in this regard is the hadith in which the Prophet says, Ar-rajulu ala dini khalilih, fal yanzur ahadukum man yukhalil. The Prophet gives such clear and comprehensive advice when he says what? A man follows and is upon the religion of his friend. So, therefore, you should be very careful and consider who you make your friend. Everyone knows that when A and B are together, that either A is influencing B or B is influencing A. There is no other option. The idea that, oh, we're both friends, and yeah, I have good habits and he has bad habits, but don't worry, we don't impact each other. Nonsense. Doesn't make any sense. Either you are clearly having a, a transformative effect on this individual to, to pull them up, or this person is dragging you down. So ask yourself, in each and every single one of the relationships that you have, which one is it? Are you around people that are going to p build you up and that's why you chose them as friends? Because you know they're going to encourage you and build you and raise you up as a believer? Or is it the case that you are spending 
vast amounts of your time with people that unfortunately are slowly but surely corroding your faith. We know that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud who said what? مَا مِن شَيْءٍ أَدَلُّ عَلَى شَيْءٍ وَلَا الدُّخَانْ عَلَى النَّارِ مِنَ الصَّاحِبِ عَلَى الصَّاحِبِ That no one thing is an indicator of another, not even smoke to fire. Not even smoke to fire. Like, you know, you see smoke, you like, there must be fire, right? He's like, that's an indicator. Yeah, of course, it's an indicator. But even more than that is what? One person and his friend. Even more than smoke and fire. I'm going to say that's a bigger indication of who you are as an individual. These are your friends? Then I know exactly who you are. You don't have to say a single word. I know who you are. I see your friends. It's reminiscent of a certain poem where the poet, I don't have the whole, but it basically says that how amazing that a raindrop that falls purely from the sky, if it's caught by clean hands, then it's pure enough to drink. And yet at the same time, if it falls in the gutter, then its value drops so much that you wouldn't even want to touch it. You wouldn't even want to wash your feet with it. It's so disgusting. All, all because of what? It's the same raindrop. Because of what? What it was associated with. Who it spent time with, if you will. So in that exact same way, all of us, we have to ask ourselves, if I am that raindrop, then who am I spending time with? Who am I mixing with? And what effect is that having on who I am? A wise man was, was once asked about who a friend is, and he said, huwa anta bin nafs illa annahu ghayruka It's a very nice quote. He says, who is a friend? He is you in personality, but not in person. It's like you guys are two, two, two of the same souls, but subhanAllah, you're in different bodies. This is what friendship is about. And Malik ibn Dinar, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, rahimullah, he said what? إِنَّكَ إِنْ تَنْقُلْ الْأَحْجَارِ مَعَ الْأَبْرَارِ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنْ أَنْ تَأْكُلَ الْخَبِيصِ مَعَ الْفُجَّارِ He says what? He says, if you are spending your days transporting rocks, but you're doing it with righteous people, then that is better for you than sitting and eating nice, delicious delicacies and sweets with a bunch of wicked people. So ask yourself, and ask specifically the parents, what type of an environment do you want to talk to your kids and encourage your kids to be in? Because some of us would say what? Oh, if you have to get that promotion by, you know, just spending a little bit of time at the bar, go there, but don't drink. It's okay. Right? You just got to socialize with them. That's okay. You know, it's going to make you buddies with the, with the boss. So go for it. It's okay. Spending time in the masjid, these people, what's the point? It's not going to get you ahead in life. So ask yourself this question, this important question. Would you rather see yourself or even see your children working some very difficult job, just transporting rocks, but they're doing so with the believers. When it's time for salah, they stop and pray. Would that give you pride in your heart? Or would you rather see them in some fancy cars and so on and so forth? But unfortunately, they're with people who don't have even a drop of iman in their hearts. May Allah protect us. The Prophet tells us what? The Prophet says that Allah Ta'ala informs us in a hadith Qudsi وَجَبَتْ مَحَبَّتِي لِلْمُتَحَابِّينَ فِيَّ وَالْمُتَجَالِسِينَ فِيَّ وَالْمُتَزَاوِرِينَ فِيَّ وَالْمُتَبَاذِلِينَ فِيَّ That Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala says from above the seven heavens that my love is obligatory upon those who love each other for my sake for those who sit with each other for my sake, for those who visit each other for my sake, and those who give generously to one another for my sake. Yes, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who fulfill all these criteria. May Allah ta'ala make us of those who love one another for His sake. May Allah ta'ala make us of those who we spend time and we sit with one another for His sake. May Allah ta'ala make us of those who can visit one another. Even if it takes long distances, we still spend time with the believers, those who we know and those who we love for the sake of Allah. And may Allah ta'ala make us of those who are generous with one another because obviously sharing with one another increases that love. So we have to ask ourselves, when I socialize, is my friendship rooted in the love of Allah and a mutual desire to develop each other as individuals and a mutual desire to accomplish something great through our collective effort? And that's really what I want to highlight that subhanAllah, two are stronger than one. That we need to not just have these friendships that encourage each other, but then to start asking each other the deeper questions. How are we as a collective going to do something, fi sabillah, something that, is, that we're passionate about, something that we love. How are we going to do so, spending time with one another and figure out something that we can do as a community that inshallah ta'ala is going to leave a legacy. This is going to happen when we focus on the proper friends and this legacy is going to happen when we also focus on the second generation with our children. So may Allah Ta'ala make us of those who are 